My name is Kashwani. If you're preparing for the GRE or the GMAT, at my channel you will find solutions to all the math problems that you will find in the second edition of the revised GRE. Also, at my channel you will find solutions to all the math problems in the first edition of the revised GRE here. The first edition is from day number 100, day 1 through 200, and the second edition begins with day 251. Similarly, if you're preparing for the GMAT, on my channel you will find again solution to all the problems that you will find in this book, the official guide, the 13th edition GMAT review. This book contains 230 problem solving questions, it has 174 data sufficiency questions. As I, as I mentioned already, we have solved every single problem from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the solutions to the problems, you will find them from day number 1 through 250. Just type in GMAT math day 1 and similarly for the GRE obviously you will put in GRE math. What we are going to do in this video is to discuss a topic that appears in both of these exams, a notion of what is known as prime factors. It's a very simple concept and yet sometimes people get confused. So I figured why not put together a few examples and work through them to give you the idea and after having worked through these problems that we are about to do, you will see that uh, you will not have any trouble with these questions at all. These are very straightforward simple questions. So here is the question. The question simply is uh, the prime factors, prime factors of, and whatever the number that they give you here, 156, prime factors of 156. Prime factors of 156 are, and here's going to be our answers, are, and let's see what the prime factors of 156 are. Again, it's very simple as I said, we take down 156, and our job is to find ex exactly what it says, the prime factors, but our job is to start with the lowest possible prime number that you can think of that you can divide 156 by. And of course, we must always keep in mind that 2 is a prime number. 2 is the only even number that is qual that qualifies as a prime number because a prime number is a number that can only be divided by itself and 1. And the only number that you can divide 2 by is itself and 1. And therefore, 2 qualifies as a prime number. So we must begin our work with 2. Let's begin with 2. How many 2's in a 15? 15 has 7 2's. 7 2's are 14. The remaining one goes and joins the 6 becomes 16. How many 2's in a 16? 16 has 8 2's. We find a prime number one more time, we divide by 2. This is what I'm pointing out here, even though 78 is divisible by 3, how do we know that 78 is divisible by 3? How do we know if the number is divisible by 3? We know that if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3, then the number itself is divisible by 3. If the sum of the digits of a number is divisible by 3, then the number itself is divisible by 3. In 78, the sum of the digit is 7 plus 8, 7 plus 8 is 15, and 15 is divisible by 3. Therefore, 78 is divisible by 3, but we are not going to divide by 3. We, will, we must divide by the lowest possible prime number that you can find. The lowest possible prime number that we can divide 78 by is 2, because it's an even number. If it's an even number, you must divide it by 2 and not 3, even if it's divisible by 3. How many 2's how many in a 7? Seven? 7 has 3 2's. The remaining one goes and joins the 8 and becomes 18. How many 2's in a 18? 18 has 9 2's. Now, of course, we cannot divide by 2 because it's an odd number, but it is divisible by 3. So we divide it by 3, and we get 1 and a 3. That's it, we're done. The question was the prime factors of 156 are, and the answer is the prime factors of 156 are 2, 3, and 13. That's it, 2, 3, and 13. That's all there is. 2, 3, and 13 are the only three prime numbers. These are the only three prime numbers that you can divide 156 evenly by. 156 is divisible, is divisible by several numbers, but all of, of all the factors, of all the numbers that you can divide 156 by, there happens to be only three numbers that, that are prime numbers, and those numbers are 2, 3, and 13, and those are the prime factors. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Again, the question is, the prime factors, the prime factors of 108 are, and we're going to make a list of them here, 108, 108 is an even number, so we're going to divide it by 2 obviously, again this number is divisible by 3, 108 is divisible by 3, well, how do we know that, because sum of the digits is 1 plus 0 plus 8, 1 plus 0 plus 8 is 9, and since 9 is divisible by 3, 
108 is divisible by 3, but we're not going to divide by 3 as we pointed out already. We must divide by the lowest possible prime number first. Let's divide by 2. We get a 5 and a 4. Again, 54 is divisible by 3, but we're not going to divide it by 3. We're going to divide it by 2. How many 2's in a 5? 5 has 2 2's. The remaining one goes and joins the 4, becomes 14. How many 2's in a 14? 14 has 7 2's. That's it. We can't divide by 2 anymore. Now we have to divide by 3. 27 has 9 3. Divide by 3 one more time and we get 3 here. In other words, in other words, 108 can be written as 2 squared times 3 cubed. So how many prime factors does 108 have? 100, the prime factors of 108 are only 2 and 3. Are 2 and 3. That's it. It has only two prime factors. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. The next one, if you like, if you can, you can pause the video, do it yourself, and then continue the video and, and compare your work against the work that we're going to do together from now on for all the, all the next one. The next one is 372. Pause the video, do the problem yourself, and then, as I said, compare your work against the work that we will do together in a second. 372. Let's begin. 372. Again, 372 is an even number, so we must divide it by 2. We must divide it by 2. Is 372 divisible by 3? The answer again is yes. 372 is divisible by 3 because 7 plus 2 is 9. 9 is divisible by 3 and so is 3. So the, so the number is divisible by 3. Let's divide by 2. How many 2's in a 3? 3 has 1 2's. 3 has 1, 2, the remaining 1 goes and joins the 7, becomes 17. 17 has 8, 6. 8, eight, two's, eight, 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 six, eight, eight two's are 16. The remaining 1 goes and joins the 2, becomes 12. And 12 has 6, 2's. We get 186. 186 is an even number. Let's divide by 2 one more time. How many 2's in an 18? 18 has 9, 2's. And 6 has 3, 2's. We can no longer divide it by 2. Let's divide by 3. And we get a 3 and a 1. And that's it. That's where the story ends. In other words, 372 is equal to 2 squared times 3 times 31. And therefore, the prime factors of 372 are 2, 3, and 31. 2, 3, and 31. Let's do one more. This time, prime factors of 100. Let's see if you can do it yourself. Pause the video as I said and do it yourself. 100. We're going to start dividing by 2, obviously. What do you suppose the prime factors of 100 are going to be? Can you tell? What are going to be the prime? What are going to be the prime factors of 100? What are going to be? What are prime? What are prime factors? What what prime factors does 10 have? 10 has two prime factors. 10 is equal to 2 times 5. The prime factors of 10 are 2 and 5. Similarly, 100 is going to be 2 and 5 because it's just 10 times 10. So if 10 is equal to 2 times 5 then 100 should equal, and therefore, if 10 equals 2 times 5, then 100 should equal, which is, which is simply 10 squared, which is which simply 10 squared, so 10 squared should equal 2 squared times 5 squared. But it doesn't change the fact that the prime factors of 100 are the same as the prime factors of 10, as you, can, two, as you can see, 2 and 5. We'll see in a second. We get 50, we divide by 2 one more time, we get 25, we divide 25 by 5, we get a 5, you see? 100, equ 100 equals 2 squared times 5 squares. Prime factors of 100 are 2 and 5. Let's do one more. Let's continue. The goal, the goal of course, is not to do these baby problems that, are, that we are doing right now. The goal is to get ourselves ready for the very last question that I'm going to give you. That's the kind of question that you will see in the exam on the GR and the GMAT, not this baby kind. Do you understand? Although sometimes they, these questions do appear in the GRE, in the quantitative comparison questions, where they give you in the two columns and they tell you uh, the numbers of prime factors of 100. For example, why don't we do one right now? Okay. We, we can make up quantitative comparison questions very quickly. So the, here it has two prime factors. Let's do the next one. The next one I have is 144. 144. This will make it interesting. So how many prime factors are, or does 100 have? 100 has two prime factors, 2 and 5. Let's do the next one. Prime factors, prime factors of 144 are, and we'll make a list here, how many there are. 
and we're going to make up a problem. We're just going to make up a problem impromptu, 144. And here, here's the GR equation. And of course, this this concept, this these uh, this concept of prime factors, of course, also appears in the GMAT, but in a different format. So we're going to make up a GR equation. Here's the question: column A, column B. And what what it simply says is, you're supposed to compare the number of number of prime factors prime factors of 144 144 versus the number of prime factors of 100 this is how this is how they appear in the exam well we already know that the prime, 100 has only two prime factors 2 and 5 so it has only two prime factors our job is to now figure out how many prime factors 144 has let's do it here 144 since it's an even number we're going to divide it by 2 there are, there are seven, seven twos and a 14, and there are two twos and a 4. This is again an even number, we're going to divide it by 2 one more time, and we're going to get a 3 here, the remaining one goes and joins the 2 becomes 12, and 12 has 6 twos. It's an even number, we're going to divide by one more time, we're going to get 1, 3 has 1 twos, the remaining one goes and joins the 6 becomes 16, and 16 has 8 twos. It's an even number one more time, we divide one more time, we get a 9, which is going to be 3 and 3. In other words, 144 can be written as, 1, 2, 3, 4, 2 raised to 4 times 3 squared. But that's not the point. The point here is not that the point here, as far as we are concerned, as far as we are interested, the point here is not that 144 equals 2 raised to 4 times 3 squared. The point is, how many prime factors does 144 have? 144 has only two prime factors, 2 and 3. It also only has two prime factors. 100 has two prime factors, therefore the answer is C. Do you understand? This is how they this is how they pose the question. They're not going to simply ask you how many prime factors there are in 100. That'll be too silly. It'll be too simple. This is how they phrase it. And towards the end of the video, I'm going to give you a problem that is actually a GMAT question, which looks very intimidating. Which looks very intimidating. It appears as a hard problem. But you will see that by the time you finish the video, you will know right away that it's a simple problem. They are simply asking you to compute the prime factors of a given number that's what it is nothing to it let's keep on going other let's keep on going otherwise I'll, ju I'll just keep talking I'll keep babbling so that was 144 and that was problem number five that was problem number four let's do one more problem number six I have is problem number six I have is prime factors prime factors of 585 are why don't you do that? 585. Why don't you do it yourself? 585. Remember, just because you happen to see a 5 at the end, don't just jump there. Uh, uh, don't just go gung-ho and start dividing by 5. You must first see if you can divide it by the lower prime factor than 5. Obviously, we can't divide it by 2. Is this number divisible by 3? Let's find out, shall we? 5 plus 5 is 10, 10 plus 8 is 18, 18 is divisible by 3 and therefore 585 is divisible by 3. Since 585 is divisible by 3, we must divide it by 3 first before we worry about 5. How many 3's in a 5? 5 has 1 3. 5 has 1 3. The remaining 2, listen carefully, the remaining 2 go, goes and joins the 8 becomes 28. How many 3's in a 28? 28 has 9 threes. 9 threes are 27. The remaining one goes and joins the 5 becomes 15. How many threes in a 15? 15 has 5 threes. This is how we divide it. This is the grown up method of dividing, not the long division. It will take you forever in the exam. Do you understand? Let's divide by 3 one more time. How do I know? How do we know that we can divide it by 3 one more time? I did not explain it because 9 plus 1 is 10, 10 plus 5 is 15, and 15 is divisible by 3. Divide by 3 one more time. How many 3's in a 1? 1 has no 3's. 1 has no 3's. That 1 goes and joins the 9 becomes 19. How many 3's in a 19? 19 has 6 3's. 6 3's are 18. The remaining 1 goes and joins the 5 becomes 15. How many 3's in a 15? 15 has 5 3's. We get 65. We can no longer divide it by... We can no longer divide it by... by by 3 because it is 5, 6 plus 5 which is 11 and 11 is not divisible by 3 so now we have to divide by 5 we have no choice how many 5 in a 6? Six? 6 has six has 1 5 the remaining one goes and joins the 5 becomes 15 how many 5's in a 15? 15 has 3 5 that's it we are done in other words 585 in other words 585 can be written as 3 squared times 
5 times 13. 3 squared times 5 times 13, and hence the prime factors of 585 are 3, 5, and 13. Let's do one more, shall we? Number 7. Number 7. Are we done with this one? I don't know how long the video has already gone. I want to do it in two parts. Perhaps I should call it quiz. I want to do it in two parts. Let's do one more. Okay, we'll do one more and then we'll leave the rest for the, for the next video. Number seven. Prime factors of 72 are, let's find out, 72. 72 is an even number, we're going to divide it by 2, even though 72 is divisible by 3. How do we know that? Because 7 plus 2 is 9, and 9 is divisible by 3, therefore 72 is divisible by 3. But we're not going to divide it by 3, because we can divide it by a lower prime number. You must divide it by the lowest prime factor that you can find, always. How many 3's in a 7? 7 has 3 3's, 3 3's are 6. The remaining one goes and joins the 2, becomes 12. 12 has 6 2's. Let's divide by 2 one more time. 3 has 1 2. The remaining one goes and joins the 6, becomes 16, and 16 has 8 twos. Let's divide by 2 one more time, and we get a 9, 9 goes into 3 and 3. In other words, 72 can be written as, 72 can be written as, 2 cubed times 3 squared. And therefore, prime factors of 72 are 2 and 3. Let's do one more. Number, that was number 7. That was number seven. Number eight, prime factors of 56. Prime factors of 56 are, 56 is the prime number, and 56 is not divisible by three because it adds up to 11. Two, five has two twos, the remaining one goes and joins the 6, becomes 16. 16 has 8 twos. Divide by 2 one more time, we get a 1 and a 4. Divide by 2 one more time, and we get a 7. That's it, that's where the story ends. Which means 56 can be written as 2 cubed times 7, and therefore the prime factors of 56 are 2 and 7. Let's do one more. Number 9. Number 9. Prime factors. Prime factors of. Here's, here's a tricky one. 7150 are. What are we going to do with 7150? I really do want you to pause the video at this point. Pause the video. Do this yourself. Try to do this yourself. And then you will always get more out of it if you try the problem yourself. Do you understand? Not too many people go around telling you to stop their video. I'm telling you to stop the video and do it yourself. Do you understand? And then resume it. So I'm going to give you the five seconds to do just that. Pause and unpause. All right. The trick here, the trick here is to realize that 7150 can be written as 715 times 10. That was the trick. Because <coughs> if you leave it like this, it will make your life miserable. The story will go on forever. We don't want to do that. And 10, of course, we know is simply 5 and 2. The prime factors of 10 are just 5 and 2. We talked about it. Now we just take care of 715. Can we divide 715 by 2? Obviously not. It's an odd number. Can we divide it by 3? Let's find out. 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. What do you know? We cannot divide it by 2, uh, by 3 because some of the digits is 13. 7 plus 1 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. Some of the digits is 13. 13 cannot be divided by 3. Therefore, 715 is not divisible by 3. We divide it by 5. How many 5's in a 7? 7 has 1 5. The remaining 2 is going to go and join the 1 becomes 21. And 21 has 4 5's. 4 5's are 20. The remaining 1 goes and joins the 5 becomes 15. 15 has 3 5's. Again, 143 is a tricky number. I'm going to put the cap back on here so we can talk about it. We're going to go through the list one, one by one. Pay very close attention so that, so that you don't miss anything. Can we divide this number by 2? The answer, of course, is no. It's a silly question. It's an odd number. We cannot divide it by 2. 
Can we divide 143 by 3? 1 plus 4 is 5, 5 plus 3 is 8, 8 is not divisible by 3, therefore this number is not divisible by 3. There is no point in asking ourselves is this divisible by 4 because in order for a number to be divisible by 4, it has to be divisible by 2, it has to be an even number. No odd number is divisible by 4 because if, if it's divisible by 4, it must be divisible by 2. Is it divisible by 5? Obviously not because it doesn't end in a 5 or a 0. Is it divisible by 6? In order for a number to be divisible by 6, the number must be divisible by both 2 and 3. And in order for a number to be divisible by 2, the number has to be an even number to begin with. In other words, there is no point in checking an odd number to see if it's divisible by 6. An odd number will never be divisible by 6 because in order for a number to be divisible by 6, it must be first divisible by 2 before we worry about whether or not it's divisible by 3. It's not divisible by 6. Is it divisible by 7? The answer of course is no because if we try to divide by 7, 14 will have 2 7 but we can't divide 3 by 7. Is it divisible by 8? Answer of course is not. It's not divisible by 2. How can it be divisible by 8? Is it divisible by 9? Let's find out, shall we? Is it divisible by 9? It is not divisible by 9. How do we know it's not divisible by 9? Because 9 has the same rule as 3. If the sum of the digits is divisible by 9, then the number itself is divisible by 9. Now that we establish it's not divisible by 3, a number that is not divisible by 3 can never be divisible by 9. Is it divisible by 10? Of course not. It doesn't end in a 0. Let's try 11, shall we? Let's try 11. How many 11's in a 14? How many 11 does 14 have? 14 has one 11. 14 has one 11. The remaining 3 is going to go and join this guy and becomes 33. 33 has 3 3's. What do you, 33 has 3 11's. What do you know? In other words, 7175 can be written as, can be written as 2, 2 times 5 times 5. You see, there is a 5 right here and there is a 5 right here, which means 5 squared times 11 times 13. In other words, the prime factors of 7150 are 2, 5, 11, and 13. 2, 5, 11, and 13. That's all. Tomorrow, we'll do the second video where we will do the real problem, real GMAT problem that appears that appear dealing with the concept of prime factors. I was actually going to give you the problem right now, but that problem requires a lot of writing on the blackboard, and if I start writing right now, I'll bore the pens off you. So I'm going to do this ahead of time, and you will do that. Watch for part number two, which will have two problems, actually, not one. Think of this as 10A and 10B, which are a real GMAT problem, as I said, dealing with the notion of prime factors. So if you, if you are preparing for GMAT, you don't want to miss that. Even if you're preparing for GRE, you, you don't want to miss it, because that's a very, that's the, that's the problem that we'll do tomorrow is, 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 is qualifies as a hard question and you want to know how to do them obviously. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? By tomorrow I meant, by tomorrow I mean look for part 2 of 2, prime factors part 2 of 2. Alright, bye now.